So here's our wrap up for linear regression and we're going to talk a little bit about more about residuals or errors or deviations, the leftovers from the least squares regression. So the deviations in regression are the scatter of points around our best fit line. These vertical distances from the line to the points are called the residuals or the error of the prediction E sub i. They're the leftover variation after a regression line is fit. Remember residuals are observed y's minus the predicted y's. In other words, ei is equal to yi minus y hat i. And the i's just refer to the subscript, the one, two, however many observations we have. How do we interpret residual plots? So you're only responsible for being able to interpret them, not necessarily create them, although we can easily create them in Excel. Take a look at the Excel uh, videos for that. So here's the two residual plots for our alcohol and wine, our death rate by heart disease and wine consumption, and our metabolic rate and mass in kilograms. You'll notice that the residuals are on the vertical axis, and along the x-axis are our explanatory variables. We also have a zero line on both graphs and these zero lines refer to the actual prediction line. So we can see that some of our values are above, the residuals are positive, some of our values are below, the residuals are negative. So again remember residuals are our observed values minus the predicted values. So positive residuals mean the prediction was too low meaning that my observed was higher than predicted. Negative residuals, the prediction was too high. Negative meaning my observed is a larger value, my predicted, excuse me, is a larger value than what was actually seen. And then we could have residuals very close to zero, meaning that our residual, um, the difference between the observed minus predicted essentially is very, very small. Now what we're looking for to interpret these is that we're looking for a pattern. And if there is a pattern, what that indicates is that there's maybe a nonlinear relationship. Maybe there's not consistent variation or maybe there's some other problem going on that we're not aware of. If we don't find a pattern, then that means our linear regression technique is appropriate. Now for both of these examples, we don't really see a distinct pattern, okay? There's pretty much variation across this x-axis and there's pretty much variation across this x-axis. We might say, well, that's potentially an outlier and we might look at this one in the wine again, maybe saying, well, these are potential outliers for people who drink a lot of liters of wine per day. But for our, for our purposes for the, for the education is that there's no pattern here, so linear regression is appropriate in both those cases. Let's take a look at a number of different graphs. These are from Condor.Depaul at ADU. So giving him his credit for this, there's some definitions for some of the heavy duty statistical terminology he uses, but let's go through each of these results. So this one is called unbiased and homeoscedastic. We can see here that there's no pattern no pattern at all, and the variation across the x-axis is pretty consistent, so in that case linear regression would be appropriate. For our B example, this is biased and homeoscedastic. Biased meaning that there is a pattern, it looks like some kind of straight line pattern. The variation along the x-axis seems to be pretty consistent, that means homeoscedastic, but again because of this bias, this pattern, linear regression is not appropriate. For example, C, very similarly, we do see a pattern again. It's a quadratic, so an inverted U. So that would be our bias, there is a pattern. The variation does stay fairly consistent across the x-axis, so that's not an issue. But again, because of that pattern, linear regression is not appropriate. In example D, this is unbiased. Unbiased meaning that there's no like linear or quadratic or exponential um, pattern that we can see. But what we can see is that the variation starts off small and then as we go along the x-axis it gets bigger and bigger and that's called heteroscedastic. For us the variation gets larger over x and that means that linear regression is not appropriate. Example E is biased. Again it looks like there's a linear pattern here. <clears throat> it also seems that the 
variation is increasing as we go along the x-axis, so both biased and heteroscedastic, linear regression is not okay. And then finally, oops, what did I do there? Sorry, I just zoomed. <laughs> uh, finally, example F, we do have again a somewhat quadratic pattern going on here, so it's definitely biased. And we can see that the variation is increasing as we go along the x-axis, so heteroscedastic scedastic, so linear regression is not okay. So what we need to remember is that to look at a residual plot, if we have no pattern and consistent variation along the x-axis, then linear regression is fine and that's shown by the single example that's highlighted. All these other ones are showing either patterns or increasing in variation. We could also have the reverse, we could have a decreasing variation, so think of the flip view of this. Um, so the only one that would be good is this one. Different facts that we have about regression. Well, we have to remember, we have to decide right up front which is the response and which is the explanatory. Because depending on which ones we pick, we're going to get a different slope and a different intercept. Chain correlation and slope. A change in one sigma, so one standard deviation of x, corresponds to a change of r sigma and y. The least squares regression line passes through the value x bar y bar, so that's always a point on our line. Some variation can be accounted for changes in x when there is a linear relationship, and how we get that is we square the correlation coefficient. And this is called the r squared value, we saw that before. It's equal to little r squared, and it's the variation in y hat due to x over our total variation in observed y r squared is called the coefficient of determination or squared correlation. It also can vary between 0 and 1 or 0 percent and 100 percent. Finishing up with this, just to summarize both r and r squared, our correlation coefficient is little r. It measures the strength and the direction. The plus or the negatives gives the direction and the actual number gives the strength. Remember the smallest it can be is negative 1 and the largest it can be is positive 1. So close to negative 1 or positive 1 means a strong relationship. Closer to the 0 means a very poor or possibly no relationship. We also have the coefficient of determination or squared correlation r squared. Remember r squared, capital R squared, is little r squared and it measures the amount of variation that the explanatory variable explains. It's typically reported as a percentage, so it can vary between 0 and 100 percent. We're either explaining all close to 100 percent, so mostly all the um, variation in y is being explained by the explanatory variable, or if it's closer to 0, the explanatory variable is not explaining much of the variation in y. A couple of things we have to watch out for. Correlation and regression only describe linear relationships. It's a very, very broad topic for our purposes, only linear. R and R squared are not resistant. We saw a previous video that if we have an outlier, the R value and consequently the R squared value will change. We should never extrapolate. And what is extrapolation? That's when we try to predict or forecast outside the range of variables, the, uh, the range of numbers that we've studied. So if we studied between, say, two people in the family and 10 people in the family, we should not try to predict for 15 people in a family. That's outside the range of values that we studied. Correlations that use averages are not a good idea, so stay away from them. We have to watch for lurking variables things like gender differences for medical uh, studies, or maybe uh, in our wine study, we have a Mediterranean variable where maybe in Mediterranean countries, they're drinking a lot more wine on a daily basis, say, than the average North American. So we have to watch out for that. And we also have to remember that correlation or association is not causation. So what we mean by that is that the x variable is not making, is not causing the y variable to happen. It's explaining what's happening. If I kick you in the shin, well, I cause you pain, okay? That's, that's what we mean by causation. Correlation just means that there's some type of relationship. While something is explaining something else. So that's it for regression. Hopefully you've gotten some out of this and hopefully you'll be okay. Thanks a lot.